This video will use Microsoft Excel to walk you through how to determine the Net Promoter Score, or NPS, based on a survey of 200 customers. Here's the data for our problem. Bill & Becky Travel Inc. is a full-service travel agency. The MindTap data file, worksheet C17, shows the results for the question, would you recommend us to a friend, from 200 customers who were sampled during one week. The requirement for this problem is simply to count the number of responses on a scale between 1 and 10, and determine the number and percentage of customers as a promoter, passive, and detractor levels. And then we'll calculate the net promoter score. Here you should see data for 200 customers in column A, showing their net promoter score rating on a scale of 1 to 10 in column B. The first step is to determine the frequency of responses for each rating. Now the easiest way to do that is to create a small table with two columns, one titled rating in cell F3, and the other frequency I'm putting in cell G3. Under the rating heading, I'm going to enter the ratings from 1 to 10. We can then classify the ratings into the three general categories of detractors, passives, and promoters. Scores of six or below represent unhappy customers who may spread negative comments. They are the detractors, so I'll shade those ratings and associate frequency as light orange. Scores of seven or eight are associated with customers who are satisfied but may switch to competitors. They're called passives. I'll shade these as light yellow. Scores 9 or 10 are usually associated with loyal customers who typically are repeat customers, or promoters. I'll shade these light green. Now we need to determine the frequency of each rating from the large data set. To do this, we'll need to use the count if function. Click on cell G4, type the equal sign, and start typing count if. You should see the function pop up, and then you can either press the tab key or type the open bracket. Then we need to select a range. The range we want is the entire range from cell B4 to B203. So select that range and then press the comma button. This will allow us to enter the criteria. We want Excel to count how many scores of one there are in the selected range. So we'll enter one in quotation marks. Type the close bracket and press enter. Then you should see a result of one, meaning only one customer gave the company a rating of one. Now that we have the formula set up, we can save some work by freezing the range. Click on cell G4 again, and in the formula bar, enter a dollar sign, or string, in front of the number 4 and the number 203 in that range. This will allow us to copy the formula, and it will always look at the range in cells 4 through 203. After pressing enter, right-click on cell G4 again, and select copy. Then, select the range of cells from G5 to G13, right-click, and in the contextual menu, choose paste special, and then select formulas. This will copy the formula another nine times. Now we just have to go into each one and change the criteria from one to two, three, etc., all the way to 10. So for example, in cell G5, change the one in quotations to a two. In cell G6, change the one in quotations to a three, and do this for all formulas. Now you should see that there are 22 ratings of six, 25 ratings of eight, and 57 ratings of 10. To double check we've accounted for all 200 customers, go to cell G14 and perform a sum of the cells G4 through G13, and you should get a total of 200. That means we've done it right so far. Now we want to reduce our data even further to one subtotal for each category. Click on cells E16 through E18 and type detractors, passives, and promoters. Now in cell F16, type the equal sign, type sum, open bracket, and then you can select the range of cells in the light orange area, G4 through G9, type close bracket and enter, and you should get 42. Do the same for passives by clicking on cell F17, type sum, open bracket, and select the yellow range, G10 through G11, close bracket, and press enter to get 51. Finally, do this again for promoters for the green range, G12 to G13, and you should get 107 promoters. Now in cell F19, perform a quick sum on cells F16 through 18 to make sure you get 200. This is a good check. Now we can calculate the percentage of responses for each category. For the detractors, click on cell G16, type equals, then click on cell F16, and then type backslash for the divide, and then click on cell F19. This should give you an answer of 0.21. Do this again for passives in cell G17, by taking F17 divided by F19 to get 0.255. And then once again for promoters in cell G18, by taking F18 
divided by F19 to get 0 0.535. If you do a sum of cells G16 through 18, they should equal 1, meaning we have a total of 100%. Now we can pretty up these results a little bit by making the percentages and then giving them a decimal place. So here we see 21% of sample customers are detractors, 25.5% passives, and 53.5% promoters. Now on to calculating the net promoter score. The net promoter score takes the difference between promoters and detractors and leaves out the passives. Here I'm just showing how the NPS is calculated by taking promoters minus detractors and dividing by the total of customers sampled. See here in cell M18, 107 promoters minus 42 detractors equals 65. And in cell M19, the total is 200 customers. Then finally in cell O18, which for visual purposes is merged with cell O19, we can take cell M18 divided by cell M19 or 65 divided by 200 to get 0.325 or 32.5%. Now we can talk about the results. The percentage of detractors and passives is rather high at 46.5% and the NPS is 32.5%. Remember passives are those who are indifferent and we really don't want any of those so they need to be converted into promoters. The results tell us that the company should focus more on its customers to exceed their expectations and provide a better experience. Generally, scores over 50% are considered good and top industry performers net promoter scores are in the 70 to 90% range. As you can see, net promoter score is a relatively easy concept to understand and apply. We've shown here that we can quickly determine the score from a sample of 200 customers and it wouldn't take any more time even if we had 1,000 or 10,000 customers. The only change would be the data range in our initial frequency formula. That's why we love tools like Excel to make our work easier by doing the heavy lifting for us, and then we can interpret the results.